Hey guys, it's Landon Blake with Redefine Horizons, and this is the first video I'm going to do in a set of videos that show you how to get set up for Java development on Windows with the Eclipse IDE, and then shows you how to get set up to uh, basically run, edit and run the source code for OpenJump, which is a desktop GIS program. It's been a long time since I've done anything with OpenJump, but... Um, I wanted to do some stuff in, in QGIS the other day, and uh, it was some stuff that was relatively easy to do in OpenJump, and I had a hard time with it in QGIS. So I realized that OpenJump might still have some value, so I wanted to get to get set up to develop uh, to, to develop code again with OpenJump, and um, I wanted to record these videos. Uh, I'm hope, hopefully, I'll do some videos and some articles on OpenJump development that'll help other folks at some point if they want to get involved. So. What I want to do in this first video is just kind of show you how to get your development environment set up on Windows. Uh, if you're new to Java or Eclipse, it can be a little bit intimidating, although it's getting easier. Um, so I want to just show you how to get Eclipse set up and installed and then uh, how you can uh, basically access the, the OpenJump source code and, and put it into an Eclipse project. Um, that if we, if we'll probably only get that done in this video, then it, then we'll do a separate video where we actually try and get a, a what we call a build. Uh, so we're gonna we'll try and actually build, uh, uh, compile the code and and build the jar file uh, that we use to actually uh, start OpenJump. So that should be interesting. <laughs> All right. So if you just Google Eclipse Java IDE, uh, you're gonna get you're gonna get to this web page or something close to it. So uh, if you just come up here. And go to uh, this is uh, the eclipse.org foundation page. You just come down here and click Eclipse, okay? And then you want to go to the download button, okay? So we're going to go ahead and download that. And uh, so they've got an installer here, um, but I'm not 100% sure, sure that's what I want to use. Um, we're going to try it out. Because uh, I just have to be able to, to select my uh, installation folder, but I think it'll let us do that. So we want to make sure that we just have the Eclipse IDE for Java developers checked. There's a, there's a lot of other different packages you can get, but this is the simplest one, and it'll install the least amount of stuff on your on your computer. All right, so I think we're okay with this. This is what we want. So we're gonna download the installer. So I'm gonna just open this link in a new tab here. And we'll download this package, okay? And it gives you an opportunity to donate here. I already do that, so I'm going to skip that here. It's going to download, okay? And then this this has the instructions here. We're going to run the installer. We're going to pick the package to install. Choose the installation folder. Then we should be able to launch Eclipse. And then there'll be some plugins that we want to install, okay? Let's see if I've got that downloaded. Yeah, it hasn't downloaded yet. All right, it needs a few more minutes, a few more seconds. It's almost done. All right, guys. So I've got it downloaded now. Uh, this is what it looks like. Um, it, it's got this JRE on it. So to, to run Java programs on your computer, you have to have what's called a Java runtime environment. And uh, it used to be that you would install, you'd have to install that separately. Uh, but they, they bundle it now with Eclipse, which is cool because it makes, that, makes your life a lot easier. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to just double click on this installer here. And we'll see what happens. So I haven't used this new installer, so we're gonna. This is gonna be a little bit of trial by error. Okay, so like I said before, we want to just choose the IDE for Java developers. Okay, it's asking me where to put the uh, the virtual machine. This is the Java runtime environment. That's fine. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and. I want to 
change this path a little bit. I'm putting things on my F drive under programs. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and install. And I just, you can put it on your C drive. I just, I have some software runs on a separate drive on my computer. That's why I have it on the F. Okay, so we're going to let the installer run here. Alright guys, so the installer is finished now. It has this launch button, so I'm going to go ahead and click that. It'll give you this little splash screen. Okay, now this is really important. It's going to ask you for a workspace. That's the, the place on your file system where Eclipse is going to keep all of the project files. And so I have a, a spot on that same F drive that I want to keep mine, but you can pick, you know, you can put it in your documents or wherever you want to, wherever it makes sense for you. So I've got a spot under programming. I'm sorry, let's see, where did I put it? Oh, I've got it in my Dropbox folder, that's right. All right. Programming zone, then I've got a work zones and I've got this Eclipse work zone here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that folder. I'm going to tell it use that as the default and you know, don't launch me or don't ask me again and then I'm going to hit launch. Okay. Okay, so it's going to fire up. Okay, guys, so when Eclipse fires up, you're going to see something similar to this. Uh, I've got the dark theme on. You you may, the default may be the, the kind of light color theme but it doesn't really matter. So what we want to do is we want to come over here to create a Java project. Okay, and I'm going to call this Open Jump Small Business US. I'm going to select the, the, the defaults here so it's fine in the latest JRE, Java, Java Runtime Environment. And we're going to just go ahead and hit Finish. Okay, so we've got a project here now. It's just empty. Okay, so it's shown it's got the, the Java runtime environment libraries, but other than that, it's empty. Okay, so we want to do two things. We want to link to the source code for OpenJump, and then we want to add all of the dependencies that OpenJump needs. Okay, because uh, until you add the, the dependencies, which is other jar files that OpenJump needs to run, it's other library files, uh, before, if, until you get those properly set, um, you're going to get build errors. Um, and, and open jump, we won't be able to, to build and export a jar, okay? So you'll notice I'm in a different color shirt today. That's because I've spent the last three or four hours last night and this morning kind of beating my head on um, getting the right set of libraries um, to support the build of open jump and Eclipse. And part of the reason is as, as open jump was in an older version of Java, now with the new version of Java. Um, there was some code that was moved into the Java runtime environment, and so if you have that in an external library, Eclipse will give you a warning, and so it took me a, a while to figure out what those libraries were. So I think I've got it squared away now. And so, But what that means is you can't just build with the, with the libraries that are on SourceForge uh, for the OpenJump, um, in the OpenJump uh, code repository, or in either of the, of the plus or core downloads. So I am going to... Um, get a cleaned up uh, uh, zip file with the source code and the, and the libraries you need to get a build going in Eclipse. I'll get that online, I'll, I'll reach out. It's been a while since I contributed any code to the folks at the Jump Pilot Project, which, which uh, hosts OpenJump, but I'll reach out to those folks and see if they'll uh, let me host that uh, source code and those, those libraries on, on their uh, source code repository for others. But either way, I'll make it available online. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to come in and we're going to do the source code, source code first. So we're going to right-click on the project name and go to Properties. We're going to come over here to the source under Java Build Path. We're going to come over here to Source. Okay, and we're going to hit the Link Source button. And we're going to browse for this, the source folder that I've set up. Okay, so we're going to grab that. So here's the source folder. And it doesn't like that it's got the same name as the existing source folder, so I'm just going to put OJ dash in front of it. Okay, and we'll hit apply and close.
files. Okay, so as soon as we do that, you can see we've got this OJ source file now, and it's come in and recognized all the Java packages in that source folder. But you'll notice they've got a bunch of red X's. That's because we don't have the, the libraries, the dependencies set yet, so we're going to do that next. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and delete this default source folder because we don't need it. And we will go in, uh, we'll go back in to our uh, build path here under project properties. And this time we're going to go to libraries. We're going to click on class path and we're going to add all the external jars uh, that OpenJump needs. So I've got them all in a folder here called dependencies. And we'll grab those, open them up. Okay, now if I did this right and I have all the libraries correct, um, when I hit apply and close, all these red X's will go away and, and we'll be able to export a jar. Okay, and so that it did, it worked. Otherwise I'd have a red, nope, it didn't work. <laughs> I had this, I thought I had this all cleaned up. Oh man, I just had a project with this all cleaned up. So let's see what we got going on here. Oh, okay, it's because we don't have JUnit imported as a library. Okay, so uh, JUnit, uh, also, or OpenJump also returns on, or depends on JUnit, which is a testing library. So we're going to come back in here to Properties, go to Build Path, Java Build Path. Now on the Libraries tab, instead of adding an external jar, because so many projects use a JUnit, it's a built-in library. So I'm going to click Class Path here and say Add Library instead of Add External Jar. And I'm going to say JUnit next. JUnit 5 is the default. That's the latest version. I'll hit finish and apply. Apply and close. Okay. And you got to give Eclipse a, a minute to build. Okay. But now all our errors went away. So we've got a working open jump project in Eclipse now. What that means is we can actually export a jar file from open jump that will allow us to. Um, to run the program if we have some other stuff set up properly. So that's super cool. That means we can fix bugs and, and refactor and clean code a little bit and um, put those improvements that we make in the source code. Uh, we can export those to, to binary bytecode, Java bytecode in a jar file, and the program will, will have those improvements. So that's a huge step, man. I, I was beating my head on this. I didn't know if I was going to be able to get it done, uh, but we got it done. So that's cool. So this is a big accomplishment. Now, we might be able to just export this project for others um, so that other people can just download this uh, download this project. Yeah, I'm going to have to, to uh, mess around with that for a little bit. I'll do some Google searching and see, but hopefully we can just get people an Eclipse project they can just import. And uh, all this will just be done because that would be super cool. <laughs> Make it easy for newbies. Uh, if I can get that to work, I will. I will do a little add-on video uh, where I show you how to do that. Okay. So, anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Um, in the next video, uh, I'm going to show you how to export a jar for OpenJump, and uh, we'll attempt to get that jar running in a script um, and uh, in in a launch script because you need that for Java and. Um, and that'll be a big step forward. Um, and then if we can get that to work, uh, the, the current open jump uh, batch script that, that launches the jar is super complicated. I'm going to see if I can just simplify that with a Windows only exe uh, that we're going to try and make with Launch for J. So we'll see how we'll see how that goes. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. All right, guys. So I figured out how to uh, export and uh, import this project folder. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this whole Eclipse project available with everything you need to start coding with OpenJump and Eclipse, and then all you have to do is import the project. Everything will be set up. How cool is that? All right, so what you do is you come over here. When you open Eclipse, instead of creating a new Java project, you're going to import a project. Okay, and then we're going to say existing projects into workspace, and we're going to hit next, and then you're going to browse to this a directory that has this folder that I'm going to make available for download. Okay, guys.
guys. So we're going to select this project that uh, you're going to be able to download. And we'll say select folder. And uh, it's going to show the project here with a little check mark. And we're going to hit finish. And then if everything goes according to plan, you'll get the project here with no build errors, which is pretty fantastical. All right, so I'll try and make this Eclipse project available for download uh, online. Um, and we'll, we'll try and put a link to that in the comments. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Appreciate it.